Hello, and welcome to Gus McDowell's Strategy and Tactics. I'm Nick McDowell. Today we're playing part two of Ragnarok Armada, the 12th and final mission in the NATO campaign in Naval War Arctic Circle. Naval War Arctic Circle is based on a hypothetical Great Arctic War set in 2030 and fought in the North Atlantic, Arctic, Baltic and the North Sea. The NATO campaign covers the Great Arctic War as experienced from the Northern Partnership and NATO alliances. In Ragnarok Armada, we must conduct a counter-invasion of occupied Scandinavia. In the previous episode, we developed a plan for the initial naval and air operations in this complex amphibious assault on Trondheim and Stavanger in occupied Norway. We reviewed the situation, friendly forces and enemy forces, and planned a three-phase operation. In this episode, we commence Phase 1, Defend. Naval forces conduct local defensive ASW operations with active sonar and towed arrays. Naval forces conduct local offensive ASW operations out to 20 kilometers. All forces establish combat air patrols and local air superiority out to 100 kilometers, then launch AWACS. RAF Lossiemouth and RAF Lackenheath launch Poseidon ASW missions. Episode 12, Ragnarok Armada. Allied forces are ready to invade Scandinavia and two separate landing forces are moving towards their targets. Enemy forces are expected to put up stiff resistance. Objectives, bring the landing forces to their destination without suffering serious losses. And so we begin. Bring landing force north to destination marker. Bring landing force south to destination marker. All landing craft must survive. New detection, a barrier of A50U Schmel. The F-35C Lightning II fighters immediately turning to intercept. Fox 3, the Lightning launches a missile. This is Orland main air station to the north. The USS Virginia is conducting a patrol in the waters west of Trondheim. The Virginia activates its TB-29 towed array sonar. A pair of F-35C is patrolling the skies west of Trondheim, in advance of landing force north. The fighters slow down and increase altitude. Vampire, vampire, vampire! Two sets of missiles inbound. Three M54E Club surface-to-surface -surface naval SSN-27 missiles. Two points of origin means two launch platforms, probably submarines. The Queen Elizabeth launches two alert fighters. This is the Schmel. It is an airborne early warning and control aircraft and provides the enemy with situational awareness. It is no doubt detected landing force south and has triggered airstrikes from Gardamon Air Base near Oslo. Shooting down this plane will blind the enemy and force their attack aircraft closer to detect friendly forces. The Schmel is shot down. Next, to deal with the inbound air threat. The alert fighters from the QE-2 launch. The landing force has fired surface-to-air missiles. It has probably activated radar against orders. This makes it easier for the enemy to detect the fleet. The fleet deactivates radars. The fighters from the QE-2 launch more missiles. The intention is to use fighters to shoot down the inbound missiles as the fighters can rearm from the carrier's magazines. The fleet's surface-to-air missiles cannot be replenished and must be hoarded until required. This is a RIM-66 standard MRSM-2.
the inbound club missiles start taking casualties. QE-2 launches more fighters. In the background, Landing Force South launches more surface-to-air missiles. The fighters are moving to patrol positions over the invasion beach near Stavanger. Meanwhile, the first missile salvo has been defeated. Attention turns to the second. Landing Force South deactivates its ANSPY-1D radar and returns to MCOM Black. The fighters launch their remaining AMRAM on the second salvo. Elsewhere the battle space is quiet, for now. In the north, the enemy has occupied Orland Main Air Station. Virginia continues its patrol. The F-35 fighter patrol activates its ANAPG-81 air search radar and is immediately rewarded with multiple detections. Four large fixed-wing aircraft groups and a naval surface action group. The fighter vectors southwest out of surface air missile range of the surface action group and targets the first of the hostile air contacts for BVR engagement. CVG North, the northern covering force, consists of the Theodore Roosevelt, a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, the San Jacinto, a Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser, and the Lassen and Howard, both Ali Burke-class guided missile destroyers. The covering force activates sonar for local ISW defence. The air search radars stay off. The Teddy Roosevelt launches its fighter squadron in pairs. The patrolling fighters switch targets. Landing Force North, Objective Trondheim, consists of His Majesty's Norwegian ship Fridolf Nansen, a frigate, the USS Bonhomme Richard, a WASP-class escort carrier, a commercial container ship carrying the ground forces, and HMS Darling, a Type 45 destroyer. The landing force activates sonar for local ASW defence. The air search radars stay off. The enemy aircraft have been identified as Tupolev 222M3 Backfire C bombers. These bombers are high priority targets as they carry anti-shipping missiles that are lethal to the landing force. Each bomber carries 10 such missiles. One single hit could end the invasion. The first Tupolev is shot down. The fighters are headed west, avoiding an inbound air to air missile. There is an undetected enemy fighter out there somewhere. The Virginia changes course to intercept the enemy fleet.
The lead Tupolev in the first pair evades the inbound Amram. The second group is not so lucky and a Tupolev is shot down. To the south, more inbound surface-to-surface -surface missiles. A third point of origin, so probably a third submarine. A pair of fighters from the QE-2 launch against a lone Sukhoi T-50, otherwise known as the Su-57 Felon. Another pair launch against the remaining inbound club missiles. Covering force south, a British carrier group consists of the Queen Elizabeth II aircraft carrier, the HMS Diamond and HMS Dragon, both Type 45 destroyers, and HMS Richmond and HMS Somerset, both Duke-class Type 23 frigates. The covering force activates sonar for local ASW defence. The air search radars stay off. In the background, it seems the landing force has again launched surface-to-air missiles, no doubt again activating radar in contravention of orders. Their commander will face an inquiry. A fourth salvo of missiles detected. It is unclear whether this is the same point of origin and the same submarine, or a fourth point of origin from a fourth submarine. Another launch against the lone felon. Landing Force South, Objective Stabinger, consists of the HMS Dauntless, a Type 45 destroyer, the USS Iwo Jima, a WASP-class escort carrier, a commercial container ship carrying the ground force, and the Winston S. Churchill, an Ali Burke-class guided missile destroyer. The Landing Force deactivates the air search radar and activates sonar for local ASW defence. To the north, a report is received that one of the F-35 patrol fighters has crashed for lack of fuel. The final salvo of club missiles takes casualties. To the north, Tupolev bombers are moving south. A fighter is detected. The wingman from the patrol moves to engage. but is out of missiles and disengages. The final club missile is defeated. This is the Lone Felon. It outruns the Amram. RAF Lakenheath has a range of aircraft ready to launch.
a Boeing P-8A Poseidon multi-mission aircraft in an anti-submarine warfare role takes off. It heads to a patrol position southwest of Stavanger. This is the Boeing E3 Sentry AWX aircraft patrolling east of Scotland. It moves to maximum altitude, slows down for a long flight, and activates the ANAPY Band 1 Band 2 radar. RAF Lossiemouth has two squadrons of fighter aircraft, one equipped with F-22 Raptor fighters and the other with F-35 Lightning II fighters. Lossiemouth launches its squadrons to form a picket line along the Norwegian coast. This will protect the covering and landing forces from the inbound Tupolev bombers. Lossiemouth also launches a Boeing KC-767 aerial refuelling aircraft. Some of the fighters might be out a while. Finally, Lossiemouth launches a Boeing P-8A Poseidon multi-mission aircraft in an anti-submarine warfare role to a patrol position off Trondheim. Fighters from the Teddy Roosevelt engage the fighter from Orland. More Tupolev bombers detected in the south. The barrier of Schmel did its job before it was shot down. The QE-2 fighter squadrons move to intercept and go nose hot. Up north, with no air threats within a couple of hundred kilometres, the Teddy Roosevelt launches an E-2 Hawkeye maritime surveillance aircraft. The aircraft increases altitude, moves to its assigned patrol area, and activates its ANAPS-145 radar. To the south, the QE-2 also launches an E-2 Hawkeye. So far, Phase 1 is proceeding well. Naval forces have defensive ASW in place. Four missile salvos on Landing Force South have been defeated. Both forces have established combat air patrols and local air superiority out to 100 kilometers and have launched AWACS. And RAF Lossiemouth and RAF Lakenheath have both launched Poseidon ASW missions. 
both forces still need to launch offensive ASW operations. At the same time, they need to defeat the inbound Tupolev bombers. An F-35 pair from the Teddy Roosevelt moves to intercept a lone patrolling felon. The Teddy Roosevelt has launched a Room 66 at the Felon. It is too close to the Hawkeye. Immediately, the commander orders the air search radars switched off. But it is too late. The enemy fleet has detected the transmissions and launched missiles. P-1000 Vulcan missiles. Unmasking the covering force to prosecute a single felon was foolish and contravened direct orders for emission control, another board of inquiry. The Teddy Roosevelt launches two pairs of F-A-18 Super Hornets to intercept. The idea is that with the covering force no longer radiating, the enemy missiles will lose track and self-destruct, or be destroyed by the Super Hornets. Meanwhile, the felon has gone to Afterburner. It uses countermeasures to evade the AMRAM. To the south, one of the Tupolev bombers also uses countermeasures to evade an AMRAM. The AMRAM is radar guided, so not spoofed by flares, but the countermeasures would also include chaff and ECM. The second Tupolev also evades. The felon to the north outruns the Rim 66. Even though the bombers were not shot down, they were forced to go defensive instead of launching missiles. This spoiling tactic buys time for the fighters to re-engage. A lone Tupolev out of Orland flies nap of the earth and evades an AMRAM. The F-35 launch against the Felon again. The air battle over Stavanger heats up. The enemy fleet has launched a salvo of P-700 Granite SSN-19 shipwreck missiles and another salvo of P-1000 Vulcan missiles. I was hoping to avoid a naval surface engagement this early in the battle. A felon is shot down north of Stavanger. The lead aircraft is also shot down.
a Tupolev of AIDS. Another is shot down. More missiles from the enemy fleet. Another Tupelo shot down. And another. And another. But another club missile salvo has been detected. Another submarine. A Tupolev near the Shetland Islands is shot down. But it has already launched its missiles at the QE2. The inbound missiles are Radica K-37 Uran missiles. A salvo of 10 missiles, any one of which is deadly to the carrier. The carrier has responded with surface air missiles. The air threat over Stavanger is under control. To the north, a Tupolev is being chased by the Namram, and the F-35 vector to re-engage the remaining felon in the pair. They activate radar. To the north, a Sukhoi is shot down. The Tupolev evades. The Felon evades again, and the F-35 moved to re-engage. The QE-2 is defending against the Uran missiles with a mix of Aster-30 and RIM-66 standard MRSM-2 surface air missiles. A pair of F-35 over Norway engage a pair of Felon flying south. Another pair re-engage the Tupolev. To the south, friendly air strength grows, but an F-35 is running from a Vimpel air-to-air -air missile. The F-35 evades, but is bingo fuel and heads back to the QE-2. The Felon has another RIM-66 missile on it. It is shot down, but the enemy fleet has reacquired the friendly fire control radar and launched more surface strikes. The 
The Tupolev is flying Napa the Earth at supersonic speeds. The highly trained and experienced pilots are hit and plough into the side of a mountain. The wingman of the felon pair is also shot down. Flight lead goes supersonic and uses terrain and countermeasures to evade the AMRAAM. More air combat over southern Norway. The Teddy Roosevelt deactivates its air search radars. To the south, a felon is shot down. To the north, the air battle near Trondheim heats up. Multiple detections and a pair of F-35 are running from Vimpel. Two pairs turn into cover. A Sukhoi Su-35 flanker is shot down, but the flight lead survives. Both F-35 evade the Vimple, but run out of fuel and turn for home. Another felon is shot down in southern Norway. The battle for Trondheim is in full swing with three salvos of surface fires inbound and a host of enemy aircraft. The F-35 from the original patrol is heading west and unresponsive. A problem with cockpit oxygen, perhaps. The F-35 target inbound Tupolev 295 Badger bombers. The Super Hornets take up patrol positions to shoot down the inbound surface-to-surface -surface missiles. The enemy are building up their air strength in the south and launching fighters from Gardamon Air Base near Oslo. Friendly fighters are running low on missiles. More fighters are inbound from Lossiemouth, but it is time for the QE2 squadron to fire their last missiles and return Winchester. To the north, a felon is shot down. Another felon uses terrain and countermeasures to evade.
a Su-35 flanker is shot down. And a Tupolev 295. One remains. In this episode, we have executed most of Phase 1. Naval forces have defensive ASW in place. Six missile salvos on Landing Force South and Covering Force South have been defeated. Both forces have established combat air patrols and local air superiority out to 100 kilometers and have launched AWACS. And RAF Lossiemouth and RAF Lakenheath have both launched Poseidon ASW missions. Covering Force North starts to launch ASW helicopters. Two more Felon are shot down in quick succession. In the next episode, we will continue the battle for air superiority over Trondheim and Stavanger now underway, and defend Covering Force North from the inbound surface strikes. As always, thanks for watching. For more Naval War Arctic Circle content, check out the NATO campaign and Jersey Blockade playlists on our channel. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and donate, and stay tuned for the next episode.